Hey guys, my name is Sindhu. And I'd like to talk to you today a little bit about a project that I did in the spring of 2016. Now before we begin, I have to acknowledge Sophia, Wyatt, Maxine and Jeremy who worked alongside me on this project and Dr. Walker who supervised it. Now let's talk a little bit about biomimicry. When we first began doing our project, we were completely unaware of what a fascinating subject biomimicry is. But by the end, we discovered how amazing its applications are. So hopefully by the end of this presentation, you'll share this excitement with us. Biomimicry is essentially any kind of design, engineering, communication, architecture, that's inspired by nature and its organisms. Now, biomimicry has a lot of applications in fields like energy, architecture, agriculture, medicine, and communication. Here you see a few examples. There's a high-speed train designed to minimize friction caused by air resistance, inspired by kingfishers' beaks, growing food in sustainable ways inspired by prairies, and buildings designed with an internal climate control system, inspired by structure of termite mounds. Likewise, humpback whales are known for having great maneuverability despite their giant body masses. And on close observation, it was found that this could be due to small irregular bumps on their fins called tubercles. A Frankie Fish of Westchester University successfully applied the concept of tubercles to wind turbines and saw a remarkable increase in the efficiency of energy production. Now this got us thinking if this aerodynamic phenomenon can be replicated in hydrodynamic systems. Or simply put, if we can use it for consumption of energy instead of production and use it in water instead of air. Now let's take a look at the mechanism of tubercles. Tubercles are usually on the leading edge and they act as passive flow control devices that improve performance and maneuverability of the flipper. So this concept is not theoretically impossible. So before proceeding to experimentation, it's important that we take a look at the possible outcomes of the project, which brings us to collecting data and calculating the possible implications. Now, as, as we all know, biomimicry is a sustainable concept, and with a few statistics obtained from different strongly backed sources, we were able to calculate the following results. Cargo ships emit the same levels of harmful gases, about 50 million cars per year. There is around 90,000 cargo ships in the world. If propeller efficiency was improved by just about 1%, air pollution reduction would be equal to no one on earth starting a car for 45 years. Reducing the pollution in oceans, it's, it's also very important for marine life and plankton. So now that we have the calculations, it's time to build the prototypes for larger objects and find experimental evidence. So for this we employed the following components. We built boats of negligible mass using 3D printers, DC motors for powering the propellers using Arduino motors. We, we made a speed measuring gun using Arduino and ultrasonic sensors. We used troughs for controlled water flow, made them out of wood and metal. And we created a wireless start function using NRF24 wireless transceivers, which are essentially like Bluetooth, but they employ a parallel communication method, allowing us to start two different motors at the same time. I won't bother you with the details of all the glitches and complications we ran into in the process of constructing these elements, so I'm going to jump right ahead to the finished product. Once executed, our products came to look like this. Now that the project is constructed and put together, we proceeded to the testing phase. During this test, we were able to prove our hypothesis with a remarkable 44% increase in, in velocity between traditional propeller and the tubercle propeller. Measuring both velocity and acceleration was essential as we had to make sure 
that on a larger scale, the boats don't hit a threshold where the values go spiraling down. The velocities were pretty consistent, proving that the threshold doesn't exist at the farther distance. Or in layman terms, we raise two boats, one with a conventional propeller and the other with the tubercle propeller, looking to see if there was any speed difference for the same amount of current used on both of them. And turns out there's a 44% more efficiency and a 44% increase in the speed of the boat that used tubercle propellers. Here you see a table of average values we obtained in multiple testing trials. So now that we know that tubercles do cause increased efficiency, let's take a look at some real-life advantages of the efficient fuel consumption system. As of 2015, globally, 50,000 merchant ships were trading internationally, and these were used multiple times a year to facilitate trade. So 1% increase in the efficiency would save, at the very least, about $1.6 billion a year just on cruise ships. Most container ships are designed to travel at speeds around 24 knots. They usually run slower than their capacities to save fuel, but at the expense of additional travel time, particularly over long distances. Most large cargo vessels are powered by bunker fuel, also known as heavy fuel oil, which contains higher sulfur levels than the diesel we use. There is a plethora of nature-inspired applications at places level and at the product level. You just need to conduct a Google search for biomimicry to come across a great variety of ways that we are copying nature's forms for emulation of our human designs. There's plenty of work to do for biomimetic and architects in the years ahead and much to be done to align our ways of designing to that of nature's. Biomimicry is an exciting and futuristic approach for sustainable industrial, economic, architectural, and environmental growth. Something to think about. Thank you.